All right, this is the pattern you have to start making first. The pattern's made out of cardboard or manila folder or something like that. And anytime you do uh, a carving of an animal or a bird, you have to do a side view, and then you have to determine how thick it is uh, before you can carve it. All right, I use a head length when I'm doing uh, the car or making the pattern. Measure off how long it is and how thick it is. Doesn't matter whether it's a mule or whether it's a grouse or whether it's a cardinal. Right, this is the almost, this is the finished carving of uh, the grouse right here. All right, the fully detailed, and then uh, I use a torch to uh, uh, burn off the uh, hard surfaces or hard angles when I'm carving. All right, then I brush it with a brush. And then uh, when I'm painting, the soot in the first coat will mix with linseed oil and that will get it an earthy tone. And then that continues all the way through the uh, painting. And the legs are made from coat hanger wire and tie wire like you get from Lowe's. And also I use crochet thread to shape the legs further. And then Elmer's glue. All right, and then, then I uh, start painting. Right, the next, uh, these, these birds are all, this will be a quail, and this will be a turkey that's walking along. Same process that I used on the other one. Now when I do the cardinal, first step is the pattern, and then I cut out the side view, which will be this, and I cut the head out separately, so the grain of the wood will run with the crest, and it will also run with the tail and then I can turn the head either way I want. And also, uh, when I cut out the top view, the next step, I will flare the tail, either flick it up, down, sideways, or some way that gives it motion. I also will usually turn the head, and that gives it more motion and, and uh, more realism. And the more detail you get on the birds or the animals, then uh, the more realistic it will look when you get through. And with, uh, uh, and I'll hold this up and see what this would be a mule and this is uh, great uh, Uncle Jim's in honor of great Uncle Jim who was a moonshiner and uh, he's down on the Little Tennessee and the uh, uh, hills were so steep that uh, you couldn't use a truck or a car or anything else to pull uh, the fixings around uh, so he would use a sled and a Belgian Belgian mule. And this is the same process. You have to uh, do the detail, a side view of everything. You have to learn about what equipment you use for that, how a sled is made, etc. And then you uh, put it all together. Okay. And I'm gonna reach over here. Okay, this, this is a little tiny hummingbird. This is probably harder than the mule to make. It doesn't take the time, but it's tiny little feathers on it, and that's where you usually nick your, nick your hands. All right, uh, this is a Belgian mule, and he'll be pulling a stump, and the head is done separately from the body, and I will cut the collar in right here. That will leave a shadow, and that will make it look more realistic. All right, now, anytime I'm cutting toward myself, I do it just like you'd peel an apple or a carrot. Make slicing cuts and you don't make too deep of cuts. But this is called a stop cut and a V cut. You keep cutting until you get that down in there. I'm gonna do a smaller piece here. Okay. You go all the way around like that and level it out and then I'll have to carve the uh, neck on the mule until it fits right down in there. All right, now most of the time when you're cutting, I've got the grain of this wood running down this way uh, for the strength in the legs and the tail. And on the mule head, I have the grain of the wood running with, with the ears and the nostrils, mainly the ears, all right? When I cut away from myself, I put the thumb on the back of the blade, thumb on thumb, and you rotate your hand. That makes it a slicing cut. You don't just push it. If you just push it, after about 15 minutes, your hands are shaking. 
So you slice like this. All right. Okay, if I need to cut toward myself, I lay my thumb down on the work and slice toward it. It's just like, just like this. And it also, it will cut better if I make it a slicing cut. So I rotate it a little bit and keep my blade flat. If I don't, the edge of the blade chips. Don't start doing this. Slice. Okay, same on all over. I'll smooth it. I've used a belt sander to rough shape this. All right, if the wood gets too hard, our local basswood gets really hard uh, in the Appalachian Mountains. You spray it with 50% alcohol, 50% water, and put it in a big sandwich bag for an hour, and it reabsorbs the moisture, and it becomes soft again. Okay. Now the last thing I do on something like this, the legs are really thin. If it was a deer or a mule, I will uh, wait on the legs until I get the body carved because the legs are easier to break. So I'll do the stuff where I have to do all kinds of force. I'll do that first. Okay. And that's basically it. Toward yourself like this and make it into a slicing cut just by rotating the knife or rotating your left hand with the work. Away from yourself, thumb on thumb. And you've got it like a lever and it gives you tremendous force and you've got total control as long as those two thumbs stay in contact. And that's it.